If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the Christmas story in Luke 2 and then in Matthew 2. Let's, um, let's read the Christmas story. This is Christmas Sunday. We're in church. We love the Lord. We're people who believe this story. Let's read it together. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. It feels like that some long ago time I memorized this for a piece. Remember what I told you about you know, when we were young, we had pieces that people gave us, little sayings or scriptures. That's what the service tonight is. We want to hear your kids' piece, your kids' tuba, whatever it is uh, tonight. And it's going to be a great time together. I've also requested that we have that. I'd like to hear the little boy from the carpenter shop again. Boy, I like that song. And uh, we're going to have them sing it again uh, tonight, if, if we can get them to. And um, so don't miss the service at 6.30. It'll be special candlelight service together. Uh, Luke chapter 2. Um, why don't you just read it with me? If, if you have a King James Version or know the um, version enough to read along out loud, <clears throat> we'll read um, Luke chapter 2, 1 through uh, 20. And um, let's, let's just read this together, just like this. If you can follow along, just read it right out loud with me. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made a known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now let's go over to Luke. Luke, I'm sorry, Matthew. That was Luke. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 12. This is where we find the story of the, the wise men. Um, Luke, or I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 2. Let's read verse 1 to 12. Let's do it the same way. You did a great job. Must be you have your Bibles with you today, or you have your cell phone and you have your Bible on that. And um, that's good. Let's read Matthew chapter 2, beginning to read with verse 1 down through verse 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not depart to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. These wise men were wise because of their decision. When Jesus came the first time, people were longing for him to come. They wanted him to come. They needed him to come. Much like we await his second coming. Men and churches and scholars anticipated his first coming. But while many believed Jesus was coming, few lived their lives ready and watching. So few that the few who did are called wise. These men were well educated in astronomy and medicine, but they made a decision to turn from the seat of human wisdom and bow at the feet of him who is wisdom. They were wise. These men were wise because they made a decision. They acted on what they believed. They acted on what they had seen. Others no doubt saw, saw the star. Others, many, uh, may, uh, they may have even come along for a few miles. I don't know. But these men not only saw the star, they traveled toward it. They came afar. They made a lifetime investment following the star to find the Christ. They were likely from Persia. Took them a long time, a very long time. But despite the miles and misery of the trip, these men came. We have easy chairs and the comforts of uh, American life. But so few will follow even a mile after him. So few make a decision to follow the star of their conscience to the Christ of Bethlehem. These men were wise because of their decision. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 4. Uh, ye walk, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. I was looking at that verse, cleave unto him. I looked it up in the dictionary for sure. It says to adhere firmly, closely, loyally, and unwaveringly. That's these wise men who made this decision. Let me ask you a question. Are you wise in your decision to follow Jesus? These men were wise because of their deed. They worshiped and they worshiped Christ. This season we worship him. We do our best to worship him all year long. But in this season, while others are singing, Grandma got run over by a reindeer, we are doing our best to worship Jesus. The real reason of the season. Uh, this season uh, we bow at not the cradle but the Christ. Not the mother Unbelievable how many people are worshiping Jesus' mother. She was a really good lady. I mean, she was an awesome lady, and, and we honor her. And I expect to meet her in heaven someday. But Mary can't answer your prayers. She's dead. Has been for a long, long time. Good lady. But you'll notice how everybody wants to worship Mary. But we don't worship the mother. We worship, we worship the master. Uh, not the sight, but the Savior. Not the ritual, but the Redeemer. Jesus was first. 
ahead of everything else, family, friends, positions, occupations, possessions, pleasures. Jesus was first. These men were wise because of their deed. They worshiped him. Jesus, you remember when he was being tempted, said uh, in that hour of temptation in Matthew 4.10, Jesus said to Satan, get thee hence, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. These men were wise because of their cup. What was it they discovered at the end of their journey? Not what, but whom? It was Jesus Christ. By discovering Jesus Christ, we find pardon for us. We find peace with God. We find the cure for the illness of our life. The babe in the manger is not just a cute story for the ages. Jesus Christ was born as the Savior of the world to fix what's wrong with this sin-cursed planet. He came to fix what's wrong in your life. Oh, I know someone here today is saying, but you don't understand there's a lot wrong in my life that he didn't fix. The last story, the last chapter isn't written. And Jesus intends to fix it all. And he will fix it all. One of these days, we're going to say goodbye to death. We're going to say goodbye to sickness. Goodbye to hospitals. Goodbye to funeral homes. Goodbye to disappointments and misunderstandings. We're going to go to heaven one of these glad days. Why don't you turn this mic on? Maybe this will work better. This thing seems to be cutting in and out. The devil gets in the sound system and in the wires, and we have to just resist the devil and he will flee. Um, these men were wise because of their discovery. Um, let me ask you, are you wise today because you've discovered Jesus? Are you resting in degrees and finances and what you know, what you learned? Or have you put your trust and faith? Have you discovered truly a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? One said, are you tired of chasing pretty rainbows? Are you tired of spinning round and round? Wrap up all the shattered dreams of your life. Wrap them all up and at the feet of Jesus. Lay them down. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Jeremiah 29, 13, ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. These men were determined to discover Christ for themselves. They could have stayed in Persia and read about it in the newspaper if Persia had newspapers. They could have heard the testimony of others. They could have heard the excitement of shepherds or tax-paying people who had heard the story when they came home, but they were not content with a second-hand religion. They wanted to know for themselves. And you can know for yourself. You can start a journey to find the Christ who can meet every need in your life. These men were wise because of their decision, their deed, their discovery. These men were wise because of their donations. They didn't just come to him to get, they came to give. And they gave their best. Not just a token crocodile tear, but their very best. Notice first they gave themselves. Every one of us will have to do the same. They bowed at the feet of Jesus. It's not enough to bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We must bring ourselves. I'll confess to you, in, in, my, in my life and in, in looking at other people's lives also, it's almost easier to bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh than it is to bring ourself. But you see, when he gets us, when he gets everything, then he has our gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then we have, when we've given everything to him, we find out he gives everything to us. And nothing is too costly, nothing too much. When you look at this, gold was the gift for a king. He was the king of kings. Frankincense, the gift for a priest. Priest in Latin means, is not a bad word. Priest is not a bad word. It means bridge builder. 
Truly, he built the bridge between man and God. Myrrh, that's a gift for one who died. You and I were born to live, but Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born in a wooden cradle to work in a wooden carpenter's shop. Can't you see young Jesus standing in the door of the shop, his arms outstretched? Just behind him on the wall, the sun throws a shadow, and it's the shadow of the cross because that little boy in a carpenter shop was born to die on a cross for you and for me. He was born to die. <clears throat> on July the 20th, 1969, Apollo 2 astronauts landed on the moon. It was an unprecedented human achievement. Millions remember the words of Neil Armstrong, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 2,000 years earlier, the creator of that moon made a giant leap, descending from heaven to earth. God the Son stepped down, an amazing leap, showing us God's heart of love. What we do with that first Christmas gift, wrapped not with a bow and ribbon, but with swaddling clothes, what we do with that gift matters for this life and for all eternity. Born in a cradle, that he might die on a cross for you and for me. In World War II and other conflicts, it was the custom of the people who sent sons to battle to place a star in the front window of their home. A blue star indicated that they had a son serving in, in, the, in the armed forces and maybe two stars, two sons, sometimes three. A gold star indicated that they had given a son for freedom. And a man was walking with his young son down a New York City street one night, home after home after home, looking at the brightly lit windows, and the boy wanted to know about that, why some of these homes had a, a star, oh, a little flag with a star. Oh, that, that means the family has a son in the war, the father said. As they walked along, he saw a gold star. Look, Daddy, they, what's, what's that mean? He said, well, that means they gave a son. He didn't come home. They gave a son for our country. They walked down through. The boy was silent for a while, looking at blue stars and then a gold star. Walking down the sidewalk, they came to a break in the houses and the little boy looked up at the night sky, bright star shining so very clear. Look, Daddy, God must have given a son too. Let me tell you on this Sunday morning, God did give a son. I think when it's all said and done, out of all the verses we have read together this morning about the Christmas story, we've taken time together to read from the book of Mark and from the book of Luke. I still think that the very best Christmas verse remains John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The musicians are coming. We're drawing to a close. You know, I thought of all the people that were at the program. Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday night. I was so grateful that we were able to pray with people around the altar at the program. <clears throat> I, uh, I was so thrilled, more people than last year, coming through the barn to hear the story of Christmas and and uh, someone prayed with the groups every single night. And uh, there were some that were moved upon. And I thought about the world that we're living in this Christmas. It's even different even more than last Christmas. 
so many hurting people. I thought in this congregation likely this morning or even listening, there's probably someone, and I know there is listening, because our online pastor, Brother Gilly, prays with people almost every service who live uh, away from here, but they're carrying heavy burdens. Family members that are lost without God. Family members that are dying. Oh, how hurt-filled our world is. So today, I'm likely, likely speaking to someone that you're struggling. The Christmas season is on, the beautiful decorations. People are happy, but, but you're struggling today. As we come to the conclusion of this service, I want you to know on Christmas Sunday morning, we have time to pray with you. Maybe someone here would say, Preacher, I've known better days. I can say there was once a time when I knew Jesus, I walked with him, but the cares of life, the bitternesses of life, I've been reminded just in the last couple of weeks, someone speaking to me and saying, you know, it was through a hardship in my life that I became bitter, that I became bitter against God. Bitterness is a terrible disease. Never kills the other person, but it kills you. Sometimes Christmas holiday seasons bring all of that up. We all want our families to be picture perfect for the Christmas card, but you and I both know that there's just a lot of troubles. The devil's mean. If you're here today on this Christmas Sunday morning, you've known better days, I'd love to invite you to this altar and pray. This will be a wonderful day. This will be a wonderful day to turn it all back over to Jesus. Get right with Him. Maybe someone here who's never served the Lord. Maybe you're a guest or a regular attender. You're among friends here today. We won't hurt you or embarrass you, but we'll pray with you. The songwriter must have felt sort of like I felt. A young guy growing up in the church, but just kind of slipping around the edges, people not realizing that I was far from God. I'm so glad that Jesus never gave up on me. He kept talking to me. He kept dealing with me. And on the last night of a revival meeting at the Little Spring Garden Church, <clears throat> I finally broke out of my pride and my procrastination and my stubbornness. I was running the sound not for your, the reason you're running the sound, but I'd run the sound because it was good to be back there, away out from people where it was hard to come to the altar from the sound booth. It was just a little table in the back of that church, but it was the only way I could ever sit in the back because my parents wouldn't let me sit in the back. So I was in the back, service after service, and I was going to hell by the way of a church. But I'm so thankful that he got a hold of my heart on that Sunday night. I can't say that I was even brave enough. Uh, it was God. You know, the songwriter said uh, in that familiar hymn, Amazing Grace, it was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fears relieved. We don't even have enough whatever to pull ourselves up. But God gave me the strength and the help and the nudge to step out on that Sunday night. And my life has been radically different to this moment today. Oh, I've made many mistakes, many errors, and wish I was a better person, all of those things. But I know one thing, I, God helped me to set my direction, changed me, saved me, led me to be sanctified holy, called me to preach. <clears throat> it's been an awesome privilege to be your pastor. But my deep desire out of a church, 
I've tried to tell it to you again today. Number 345 in the hymnal, if you would please, in the large hymnal, would you stand with us please as we sing this closing hymn. If you're here today and you'd like to pray, I'd like for you to step out, come to this altar. This Christmas Sunday, I believe God would like to meet someone's need. If you need to be saved, if you need to come back to Jesus, if you're struggling with something in your life, if you love the Lord, but yet you feel you need to pray this morning about anything, we're happy to pray with you. You come as we sing this song. This, this is how I felt that Sunday night. You can feel that way today. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've tried. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming. As we sing verse 3, I'm tired of sin and strain. Now I'm coming. today we've sensed that you're here and you're moving among our people someone listening is so needy Lord they don't have to respond to me but they must respond to you and I ask Lord that you would just keep reaching keep talking keep whispering keep wooing keep loving oh God don't let any of us miss it but help us to have an abundant entrance Thank you for Christmas, this wonderful story of love. Bring us back to the candlelight service tonight. May be a precious time together as a church family. For all that you do, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you all. Have a wonderful day and a very Merry Christmas. The Lord bless you.